actually can do something to save America, I might consider her. It's not about woman or man. Hillary Clinton is a terrible, terrible leader. And I have to give you nothing uh, further to prove that than to say one word, and the word is not Benghazi. The two words are Arab Spring. She was the woman who ushered this in on the world. By breaking down the governments of Libya through Egypt and Syria, she unleashed this tide of refugees onto Europe and the world. She did it. She destroyed the world order. It was funded by, look, I explained it in great de detail in Government Zero. This was funded by the evil devil, George Soros. It was planned, to the best of my knowledge, by Zbigniew Brzezinski, whose daughter works for MSNBC. Zbigniew Brzezinski, who if you were casting a movie from World War II, I could tell you which side he would be on, and it wouldn't be our side. So Zbigniew Brzezinski, the great genius, on the uh, National Security Advisor under Jimmy Carter, planned this so far as I know. When it was instituted, it destroyed nations across the Arab Crescent. It has produced this flood of refugees, and Hillary Clinton owns it. In plain English, she owns it. And the only reason she gets away with this is because of men in the media who are working for her. And those would be all the men who interview her. They may as well be on her payroll because they're not asking her these questions that need to be asked. They can ask her about Wall Street money and the hedge funds and this and that, all they want. That's lightweight stuff. The real issue is... Mrs. Clinton, your critics say that you're responsible for the Arab Spring, which has produced a disaster, a tsunami of refugees. How do you answer that? Have you heard that question once, Robert? No. No. And that should be in the Republican tomorrow. That should be in the primary debate tomorrow night in New Hampshire. But do you think you're going to get it? Who's running it this time? Her again? Hairdo? Hairdo's running this again? Ah, oh, she's going to set him up against Trump. That's all. That's a stock and trade. She's got nothing else going for her. In the beginning, I liked her. I thought she was wonderful. But look what she's become, a movie star now. Okay, let's go back to the callers on a savage. The funniest picture is on the Drudge Report of Bill and Hillary making believe they're just folks eating at a, like a diner in New Hampshire, picking at their food. It's hilarious to look at this. These people are at the top of the 0.0001 percenters, and she's sitting there with a 10-cent a fork and a little a plastic glass with iced tea in it sitting there really enjoying the salad, the sensible salad. And he's not eating his normal cheeseburger and fries, Bill. Unbelievable. You know. Okay, KLIF. Neil, you're on the Savage Nation topic, please. What's up? Go ahead. Fire. Make your point. What's up, Neil? Okay, Leo. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to All right, thanks for the call. Great call screening, Jim. Good job. Give me another one who doesn't talk. KSFO, Laura, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the interview with Trump, and I think he absolutely re responded to your your statement. It resonated with him about projecting strength, and he certainly does have, uh, you can see that there is a trust there that he has. Laura, you know what's interesting? Women are responding to what I said to him more so than men are. I know it's the women who most fear what's going on in this country and the world. They know that Obama's a snake in the grass. They know he's gone after their family, gone after everything they stand for, and they're praying someone could come along and save this country. And they don't think any of the other candidates can do it like he could do it. I think that's the issue here. And I asked someone why so many women love Donald Trump, even though he's so imperfect on so many levels, and he is. He's so incomplete and so imperfect on so many levels. And in that sense, he's more of a, an honest man than most of the others who pretend to be perfect on every level. And this woman said to me it's because women have the natural uh, requirement to raise children. They give birth to children, and they are naturally a more protective of family than men are. And they want a man who can be protective of the family called America. And do you agree with that analysis? Absolutely. And I also um, think one of the things that has resonated with me over Trump is that uh, a comment that my father, of blessed memory, had said to me five years ago, he said the United States has traded treasures for trinkets. Treasure being the American manufacturing base, the best in the world, trinkets being cheap goods from China. And mm -hmm. he told me about he was only in the war for one year. Um, and he said they had an emergency shipbuilding program. They could turn out the ships, not the not an SS Iowa, but smaller ships, but still substantial in a matter of months. And he said the American 
that the American manufacturing base has been decimated. We couldn't do that today, and there's too much regulation. And we need a builder who says we can, and not a person, a politician who says we can't. You know, you're Pro- making one of the most salient points of the entire uh, primary season. He is a builder. He's actually organized and overseen the construction of huge, huge buildings in America going back 30 years now. None of the other candidates can offer us that. They may sound good. They may hold up the Constitution like a Bible. All well and good. But they've never built a building. They've never built a three st- a three bedroom, two bath ranch house in Boca Raton, for God's sakes. In the mid nineteen, and now you raise you re- you raise up the issue of building. If we need to build, rebuild the military, who could better do it than a man like Trump? He could he could smash all the red tape. He could dismiss all of these environmental concerns which have crippled us. Do you know that Obama just gave out a directive to the entire Department of Defense that every every project in the DOD must first address climate change? Every gun that is made, every bullet that is made, every battle plan that is being organized has to be organized around climate change. Do you realize this is total insanity? It is, absolutely, and it's crippling our ability to, to accomplish it. That's why Obama did it. That's how clever he is. He threw it out there. You know, make sure everything's compliant with, uh, with uh, climate change, down to the trench level. I'm busy now. i got to go see Beyonce during the break. All right. Uh, send me the report in the month. Let's see what we destroyed now. This guy is a walking disaster. We need someone to come back, clear out all these rules, decimate them, get rid of all the environmental regulations when it comes to the, to the military, and rebuild this great military and go after our enemies. And everybody knows that. And the only person to do that is someone like him who has done building projects that are enormous in size. And again, you know, I didn't really know this myself until I read it in the New York Post this morning, which is why I mentioned it when he was on the show uh, today about all these huge projects that he took on going back to, uh, you know, to the early days. It's phenomenal. Okay, thank you for being with us. We're running short of time. It's the Savage Nation. When I come back, I'll play one minute of the Trump interview if you missed it. And then we'll take your calls, and I'll give you all the latest breaking news right here on The Savage Nation. Hey, hey, I'm your life. I'm no one who takes you there. Hey, hey, I'm your life. I'm no one who cares. Hey, hey, Super Bowl is over. What's next? Valentine's Day. The year is steamrolling. I never saw anything like this. Have you noticed time is flying by this year? Or am I imagining it? Robert, you're a younger guy than me. Do you find time is moving faster than it has last year? It, it's something about it. It's like it, it's, everything's faster. Before we know it, it's going to be uh, Labor Day, and then it's going to be the election. God only knows what's going to happen by then. What's going to come across? This man won't stop in the White House. They won't stop him. Obama's moderate terrorists are being given a, a break at every turn. Wherever you look, domestically and foreign, his moderate terrorists are given a green light. That's all. Dave on KLIF, go ahead, please. You don't like Trump. What's on your mind? Good afternoon. First of all, thank you for having me on. Putting Trump in the White House is like putting the fox in charge of the hen house. That's very that's very profound. Now, now give us some examples. Well, the reason Trump, and he has said it himself, he knows how the system works. In the debate, he talked about he knows all the back door working. Well, that's because he has built those back doors. He talks about all of these, I donated to them, I've given to these people. And he even said it himself, I give them when I need them. When I don't need them, then I don't have to deal with them. That just tells me that he is not necessarily the one being greased. He's the one doing the greasing. And the other thing, if Trump was really that that uh, caring about our country, you don't have to be president to move your factories back to the United States. Wait, what do you mean? What factory? What, what factories? He builds buildings. What factories are you talking about? Well, let's, doesn't he build suits in Mexico? His ties come from China. And oh, that's that's a, a, a zero zero one percent of his income. Come on, you're reaching for straws. You're reading the Cruz talking points. You know, look, be realistic about it. You may not. You may have another candidate you like, and no matter what you think about him or his political views or his nutty campaign. The man transformed America. He's one of the greatest planners, pardon me, who transformed New York City. It was a toilet bowl in the mid-70s. 
through the mid-90s, and he's the man responsible for rebuilding that city. You have to give him credit for that. Four bankruptcies? Four corporate bankruptcies? Stop bringing up the bank bankruptcies. That's an old story. Let's go into the buildings he built and stop with the, with, the, with the talking points from the Ted Cruz campaign. Tell me about Riverside South. Do you know anything about it? You tell me about Riverside South. Okay, I'll tell you about Trump International Hotel. Do you know what was there before he built it? Let me tell you about these things. How about Woolman Skating Rink? Do you know who built that? What was that? How about, how about 40 Wall Street in 1995? How about Trump Plaza at 167 East 61st Street in 1984? How about Trump World Tower at 845 UN Plaza in 2001? How about Trump Tower on 5th Avenue and 56th Street in 1983? How about the Grand Hyatt Hotel, which was a total cesspool filled with hookers, pimps, and drug addicts? Uh, he re re absolutely saved the Grand Central Terminal from a total meltdown. I mean, the man did things. He took the city from being a gigantic massage parlor into a livable city. At least give him credit for being a builder who saved New York City. And stop repeating the bankruptcy story already. Thanks for the call. I hope you learned something. You want to read about this? It's linked on michaelsavage.com. You can't refute reality. He built these things, not you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. You know that this is the first time in history under the communist mayor of New York, the New York City public schools have closed to honor the Chinese Lunar New Year. That's right. I don't know how many days a year the children actually go to school between the religious holidays and the fake holidays that were invented for the communists. How many days a year do they learn anything? Students at New York City public schools will not go to school today. Well, they're not at school today. For the Lunar New Year, for the Lunatic New Year, they're not going to school. This is the first time public schools will be closed to honor the holiday that is celebrated by several Asian communities. Well, my answer is, we're not living in Asia, number one. And by the way, the same thing goes for the Jewish holidays, the Arab holidays. Stop it already with the ethnic holidays. When is this going to end? You want, like, Polish Sausage Day? Hungarian goulash day. All right, the kid, you're off tomorrow. It's Hungarian goulash day. And you're off the following Wednesday because it's Polish polka day. Crazy insanity. School is for learning. That's why the kids don't learn anything anymore. But, of course, it's snowing in New York, and a winter weather advisory has been issued by the National Weather Service. I guess it's a result of global warming. They've forgotten that in February it actually still snows in New York. You know, March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. I remember that from when I was four. It snowed in early March in New York. That's before they invented global warming to tell us why it was snowing in early March. That's all. You want me to talk about the debate like a schmendrick? What's there to talk about? It's over. It's water under the bridge. You talk about the Zika virus. I'm suffering campaign virus. I'm suffering primary virus. I'm suffering the virus of politics in America. I feel like I've been bitten by a mosquito. My mind has gone dead from all of it. But okay, we'll talk about it. That's the uh, meatball of the show. Everybody wants to have, wants the meatball. It was an hour too long. An hour too long. There was something you didn't notice about the debate that, uh, well, you know that Rubio the Rube was finished. Oh, I didn't even mention him. Look at that. Oh, no, I said Rubio rubbed out. Carson cursed. Cruz careened. Bush bushed. Kasich sickened. Christy, I like Chris Christie, by the way. Any one of the men up there, by the way, any one of them would make a better president than either of the two communists that are being offered to us, the old foul one and the uh, older foul one. I never saw anything like this. What did they do? Did they go to the mausoleum where Lenin is buried in Moscow and do something with cloning and bring him back and call him Bernie Sanders? Because everything Bernie Sanders says is what Lenin would be offering us if he was running as a Democrat. Now, how'd that work out for Russia? Oh, I remember, 100 million dead. That's right. They started eating each other. So it was an hour too long. The, um, you know, Trump came out on top. But the thing is, Christie looked great. He looked very presidential. He looked like a take charge guy. He didn't fall for the, the, the bait. He didn't go for the bait and start attacking Trump. Finally, they woke up to that and stopped it. Now, there's something that was pointed out by one of my Facebook um, viewers, Caroline Hernessy, 
And she said what happened before the debate began was very telling of the personalities of the candidates. She said, as the candidates were being called out,